<laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? OK, so let's go. Um, I'm Melrose. That's me. And um, today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the modeling industry, which is very close, re closely related to the fashion industry. Some of the opportunities and coalitions that came out of girls who exited the industry with a conscience. Um, how you can turn your career into a vehicle of doing good and having meaning. And the future of fashion, how I see it. OK, so this is me. And uh, for the like, about almost the last decade in its entirety, I've been traveling, modeling, uh, living in places such as London, Germany, Israel, South Africa, Southeast Asia, LA, and New York. And I was afforded that opportunity when I competed on a TV show called America's Next Top Model. And on that show, I placed second. And I didn't have any obligations to the show afterwards, and we were living in Barcelona on the show. And <laughs> hold on, I'm nervous, I'm gonna breathe. Okay. So, okay, we were living in Barcelona and I had been working as a full-time fashion designer and we did 11 collections a year. And I was emotionally and inspirationally exhausted. And I, on the show, when I competed, I was in Barcelona and I realized I really wanted to travel and to get, regain some of the inspiration I'd lost in that job. So I thought modeling would be a great catalyst to pursue that through because I could keep one foot in the fashion industry while traveling. So that's what I did. And what I wanted to get out of modeling was enough money to start my own fashion line so I don't have to work for somebody else. And um, to make some really photographic, amazing art, because I've always looked up to fashion photography. And an understanding of a global market and a global consumer. And to become a global person myself and be a part of a global society. And what I also got was um, a priceless education in human rights, self-respect, uh, life goals and what to do when things and you realize that things are out of your control. So this is what everyone thinks modeling is like. You're like, gonna make tons of money. And you're like, everyone's always gonna tell you how pretty you are. And you're gonna live in beautiful places and go to great parties and be like so amazing. And this, which we don't really want to talk about and I didn't want to hear about before I entered the industry, this is what the modeling world is really like. So two thirds of all models make under $30,000 a year, which after paying agency fees and traveling and living expenses, you are lucky if you can afford a plane ticket home to cry for a week, like two weeks. And then <laughs> the problem is the industry is not regulated globally whatsoever. And models can enter the industry as young as 11 if they're over 5'9", and working for some of the top luxuries, luxury brands in the world. And um, <laughs> So we rarely have information on the products that we're uh, modeling for and putting our face on the brands. And oftentimes, you can't really afford to care about that because you just won't eat. And um, there's blatant stealing uh, stealing going on in the industry from model salaries, from uh, the agencies and the bookers and the clients just don't even pay. And the agencies don't want to ruin their reputation and their relationship with the brand, so they don't, they don't force them to pay. So there's also a lot of racism, a lot of sexism, sex abuse, drug abuse, blatant drug use, pushing of drug use, um, inhumane living conditions, which we are, is a whole other topic of conversation, and then promoting not just to the models, but through them to our mass societies, eating disorders and body dysmorphia. There are irreversible environmental damages going on in this industry. And the list just goes on and on and on and on. We could talk about that all the time. But we don't need to talk about that because you'll come and if you come encounter with models who have spent time outside of America in two to three markets or more, most of them have dealt with those issues. And even if you are a successful model, what does that mean? You know, like you're exposed to all these things and you travel and it's not it's not the worst job in the world, but it's it doesn't fulfill you, and it didn't fulfill me. And I realized that success isn't about um, you know, creating happiness through being successful. It's about me being happy in my day to day so I can be successful. So I decided, and I, I've learned, that you have to do what you love, love what you do, and believe in what you do. And models, generally, they have their eyes forced open because they're traveling, and they are living in these weird conditions or they're seeing the world and there is a lot of suffering out there and oftentimes it propels 
models to become philanthropists and humanitarians. And there's a Nelson Mandela quote, which I love, which is, action without vision is only passing time. And vision without action is merely daydreaming. But vision with action can change the world. So this is a list of some models who have become philanthropists and humanitarians and stood up for rights for people and the planet. And two that I want to talk about today are, the first one is Sarah Ziff, who started the Model Alliance. And Sarah Ziff is a pretty unique uh, person because she documented her rise into supermodel status through a documentary that she filmed called Picture Me. And she exposed a seemingly glamorous industry for everything that it is. And she went from making six figures to making nothing. And only very few of her clients supported her. So she started the Model Alliance, which is the first ever model union that is to um, help establish fair and wor um, safe working conditions for American models. And then she started working with Save the Children and she's been laboring for um, rights for uh, workers in Bangladesh and she actually this year for Fashion Week went and protested Nautica, who she used to shoot campaigns for, uh, for not signing the safety accordance in Bangladesh. And sh what she's doing is inspiring and it makes me think that there can be more meaning to what I'm doing. And this chick is super awesome. This girl is Topaz Page Green and she is a South African based, uh, New York based South African model who was modeling in New York for a few years and she decided to do a trip home with um, her, one of her close friends. And she was in the, um, the different schools in South Africa and she noticed a group of children that were sitting separately from each other. And she asked the guide, why, why aren't they sitting with each other? And the guide explained that one group of children didn't have anything to eat and they didn't want to eat, sit with the other kids who did because it was painful to watch them eat. And she's like, that's not going to do. So she went back to New York, stopped modeling, and she founded the Lunchbox Fund, which is aiming to um, feed the remaining children that the government in South Africa can't feed. So as she's doing this foundation, she came up with this, which is what we really should be talking about, which is Feedy. So what you do is, it's um, backed by Mario Batali and Liv Tyler and all these other amazing superstars. What you do is you take a picture of your food and you s at a participating restaurant, you stream it through your, this app um, onto your social media. And each picture posted feeds a starving child in South Africa. Like that's awesome. It's a great way to use your business to do good and it's doing something that we're already doing every day. So I think that we can all kind of come up with ways and the apps that we're inventing for our companies to implement the backbone of our companies that we, I would hope are doing, trying to do good. So essentially, if you feel great about yourself and your business and you're like, I'm a good person, it's cool, um, that's awesome. But the reality is that doing good is good for business. So even if you don't need the fulfillment in your life like some of the models do uh, that come out of that industry, the doing good is good for business concept actually makes businesses a lot of money. And these are some of the most established companies that are doing it that we can all build models off of for the ways that we want to do and the issues that we want to stand up for. And this is my company. It's Paradisiac, which is uh, means one who's addicted to paradise. And I wanted to start a bikini company that could help clean the Great Lakes. It's a diminishing, awesome resource in this country. and. I was trying to come up with a name of a brand that could embody paradise, bikinis, but also what paradise is, which paradise is awesome if you're like on the beach in Maui and you, you know, have a mojito and you're having a good time. But true paradise is having a constant feeling of joy because you feel fulfilled. So if you live your life and your business like that, you can kind of have paradise every day in what you're doing. And when you bring together people that do that, people that operate out of a point of good, and good for others and do what they love to do, people come together and impossibles become possible. Now, the future of fashion, what does this mean? Well, people want more for their money. And when you're a good thinking business person, you wanna give people a lot for what they're paying for, sometimes you can't do more, but you actually can. You can do more by giving them a good reason to buy your clothes and to help other people. But also in the future, we could actually, which is something I'm interested in with my company, um, customized clothes. So as designers, we maintain the ability to offer our design, our ideas as a base, and allow customers to come on and build what they want out of fabrics, finishings, trimmings, colors, 
And then they can go out into the world, into their clothes, and feel confident. And I think that's the, that's the way fashion's going. And if we all work together, and we all kind of, as a community, also have a bigger issue at hand, it goes from self-centered ego, which happens a lot in an industry I spent seven years in, to a ROC, which is a return on community, to a global society, which is what I am here for, and which is why I love this community. So thank you.